This is Hidden Killers Week in Review. A look back at the most prolific stories of the week. Some startling new developments in the case of Suzanne Morphew, their cause of death, <laughs> finally uh, taking a closer look at. And I'm going to guess there might be some people that might be a little bit nervous right now, now that uh, this information uh, has come out. Uh, the autopsy report uh, released Monday by the Colorado Bureau of Investigation has shed light on the mysterious death of her. Uh, the Colorado mom vanished in May of 2020, according to the autopsy conducted by the El Paso County Coroner. Susan Morphew's death was classified as a homicide caused by intoxication from drugs commonly used to sedate wildlife with no physical trauma observed on her body. Susan Morphew was 49 at the time. She disappeared on that bike ride near her home uh, near Chaffee County. Her case remained cold until her remains were unexpectedly discovered last September in Moffat, Colorado, about 90 minutes south of her last known location. The remains were found during an unrelated investigation. The autopsy identified the substances leading to her death as, and this is your department. <laughs> it is. Uh, being a veterinary technician, uh, these, are, these are drugs that I dealt with all the time uh, when we were using, when we were going into surgery, sedating animals, uh, butorphanol, metadomidine, which is also known as dexmedid, um I'm sorry, Dexdomator. Um, Dexdomator is something that you would use to sedate dogs. It wasn't something that you'd use in surgery to put them fully under. Uh, if you're going to do some sort of like sedate a dog and do a nail trim, that's what you would use. And then there's a reversal agent that you could inject um, to wake them up. Um, butorphanol is used for preoperative pain relief. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to do something, um, you know, painful during a surgery, you would sometimes do... Butorphanol. The other one, as a parone, I'm not sure exactly what that is, but these are things for wildlife, which is really weird that they were used on her. Drugs typically marketed as compounded injectables. Uh, yeah, for wildlife. It says, quote, these findings suggest a deeply troubling scenario behind Susan's disappearance and death, stated the autopsy report. Her husband, Barry Morphew, who was previously charged with her murder in 2021, had those charges dropped just before his trial in April of 2022 due to insufficient evidence. Since then, no new arrests have been made in connection with Suzanne's death. The investigative team assembled uh, to work this case continues to follow the evidence and only the evidence as they seek justice for Suzanne's death, uh, said the CBI director Chris Schaefer. In a statement issued through her, their attorney, the Morphew family described the profound impact on the case and their lives, emphasizing the distress caused by the false accusations against Barry Morphew and the lack of closure. The Morphews are left with more questions than answers and a lack of justice for, Su for Suzanne, the family and the community, the statement read, adding to the complexity of the case, Suzanne Morphew's clothes and a weathered bullet were found alongside her remains. Barry Morphew and his daughters, Macy and Mallory, have publicly criticized the investigation's narrow focus and claimed that authorities had not provided information about whether the bullet or the clothing were tested for DNA evidence. In May of 2023, Barry Morphew and his daughters spoke out in an ABC News interview after filing a lawsuit against the prosecutors, accusing them of wrongful charges. They've got tunnel vision and they looked at one person and they've got too mm -hmm. much pride to say they're wrong and looking somewhere else. Barry Morphew said, I don't have anything to worry about. I've done nothing wrong. And that's the, that's the reality in so many of these cases where it's like, OK, we got who it is. And it's like, what's your fucking evidence? And like. Richard Allen, for example, that's another one that's looking weird. Um, you know, and there's sometimes where it just looks, you know, terribly true. But some of these, it's like they just they they want to come to the conclusion and they'll do whatever they can to do it. Well, and I think a lot of times it's it's public pressure. You've got a dead body. You've got somebody yep. who is missing. We, you know, need to take the temperature down of the community because people are scared. But one thing I want to point out, not only are these... Um, animal drugs, these are compounded. And what compounded means is that a pharmacy has to put these drugs together. They aren't made in this exact formulation unless done by a pharmacist, put together, you know, kind of the old fashioned way where they're making the drug. Mm -hmm. yeah. So somebody very specialized had access to these drugs. This is a veterinarian, a wildlife specialist. So that's who they need to be looking toward is somebody who has access, whether it's a pharmacist, whether it's a veterinarian, 
um, a, a wildlife official, somebody of that nature, because this isn't something the general public could get access to. Well, could this have been done in a way where somebody used this to knock her out? Not necessarily to kill her, but this got her sedated enough where they could kill her in whatever other way they were going yeah. to. So yeah. it's but not again, a, where did they get it? Where did they get it? Yeah. Is it easier to get wild, wildlife drugs, um, uh, veterinarian, vet, veterinary drugs than it is um, human no. things like this? Or is it the same sort it of shouldn't be like, you know, it shouldn't be. But is it, you know, I. I don't, again, we're dealing with Colorado and you and I have had some stories about Colorado and their funeral industry and lack yeah. of regulation. I don't yeah. know what their veterinary industry is like. I can speak to the couple of clinics I worked in Wisconsin yeah. with um, any of the drugs that were of concern or um, scheduled drugs were locked up and it's really heavily regulated. Like yeah. <laughs> only a few people have access to these drugs. They have to be signed out. Every ounce, every mill has to be tracked. Okay. And you turn that in. Who, who tracks it? Does the state track it in Wisconsin? So like, yes. okay, so you get the drugs. You know, let's say you're the vet, you're the veterinary clinic. You, you order the drugs cause you'll need it for, mm -hmm. for procedures and such. And then when it's used, then is a report sent in saying, okay, yes. X vials were used for this. And then this is why we need to order more because we used him on this patient. And then is that how it's uh, I mean, speaking in layman's yes. terms, trying to understand it? Yeah. In layman's terms. So let me tell you when we would get an order in say of something, we didn't typically use morphine, but that's a pretty standard drug to talk about that people understand that it's definitely controlled. Sure. So let's just say we were getting morphine and some clinics do, but the ones I, I worked at didn't. Uh, you would get the box. Um, someone would sign for it. When it's open, two people need to be present. And these two people are people who are trusted within the clinic, usually a doctor, a manager, or both. Uh, and what you do is you you assign each bottle a number and you track it in a logbook and you talk about, you know, the mills that are in there. Okay. Um, and then when that bottle is done, it's I mean, you document every time you use it. Maybe you're using one mill of it that gets logged in a book that you've used one mill and it's a 12 mil bottle. Oh. So 12 uses if a mill at a time, then the bottle's done and it's spent. If you can't, and at the end of the month, you have to figure out where, you know, where did all this go? Why were we missing five mils? Where did this mm -hmm. go? Do we not track it on a patient? Chances are that's where it was. So you run an audit and figure out where it went. Well, okay. Okay. I, that makes sense. I got a question though. Um, you use it on a patient. Uh, mm -hmm. let, let's say there's something uh, unscrupulous nefarious? going on. Yes. Nefarious going on within the vet clinic. And somebody says, I need some of this stuff. Uh, I'm going to bring you my cat named Snuckles and uh, Snuckles needs to have some of these things done and they're going to need this amount of uh, the drugs uh, and uh, Snuckles doesn't really exist, but let's put Snuckles in the system as if the Snuckles actually existed and then we can account that we used it on Snuckles, mm -hmm. but you just sold it on the side to the other person because I mean, would, would the, would the government, would the the people who are tracking this stuff be any wiser? I mean, if you just no. made up a pet that doesn't exist and then you can account no. for using the drugs on that fake pet? No. Oh, there you go. No. But again, at the clinics that I worked for, and they were corporate clinics, so they were owned by big corporations. They had standards in intact. If you were going to be pulling out a, a scheduled drug, you needed another person there present to watch it be pulled up. And then you would sign the logbook that you saw and you witnessed that it was, again, as an example, one mil. So mm -hmm. you'd have to have two people in on it. If you saw that somebody took out five mils of a drug and it was just their signature, no witness, you need to question that. What's going on? Yeah. So there was a checks and balance system, but I don't know that every clinic does that. There may be ma and pa clinics out there that don't track as heavily, and I don't know how that goes down. I don't know how they work that. I would imagine there's some backwards places where this would be possible to do. Absolutely. Yeah, and probably a little more easier than doing it through like a massive um, 
you know, hospital type system, or I guess maybe like a, you know, maybe another mom and mom pop type hospital system though, too. But I, I think, uh, did they track the identities of the patients of the humans a little bit more than they would of uh, snuckles showing up? I mean, is there more accountability there for that? I mean, you know, there's social security numbers with people. Pat's is just like, you know, you could have gotten the thing off the side of a railroad track. You could. Um, it's, it's a little harder to track patients, but again, you do audits. So yeah. uh, did you make well, money off well, of this patient? If, if did you do a, a transaction? Well, if you're an ethical place, yes. But if you're maybe, you know, kind of scrounging to get by and then somebody mm -hmm. says, Hey, uh, I'll give you, you know, X amount of money for this shit. Can you just do it? And then I would imagine there's some people that would, uh, probably do it and maybe not even have any knowledge of why they're doing it or why this is needed or, you know, just to, to cash that in. I don't know. Um, it's interesting. And in, uh, it, it, cases like this are frustrating because the beginning of the investigation is so critical. And yeah. we're talking now four years into this thing. And they had such a strong focus on Barry Morphew. And now it's like, okay, all that time that you could have been looking for someone else, but you put your blinders on and just looked at him. Like, yeah. Yeah, like you got whoever did this four years to uh, to to move on elsewhere and so, cover their tracks. And Maybe cover they their found tracks. something that you know looked like, yeah. oh shit, that could track to me. I'm going to deal with that. Well, now they've had so much time. Yeah. Four years have practically gone yeah. by. Who knows what you could cover up at this point? But it is an extra piece to the puzzle that they did not have before. So, uh, one can only hope that maybe, maybe this adds a little piece that maybe can point in a direction of something. I don't know, but uh, gives a little more, uh, a little more fuel to a, a cold case. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.